When we cannot avoid certain things, the easiest way is to immediately accept it. Kittadayin Vettanamara. There's a beautiful Tamil saying. I don't seem to have said that in the retreat. If you cannot get, immediately forget. It saves you a lot of problems. Because you know that you are not going to get it, then why to be worrying about it? Eh? Forget it. And if you desire, it will let it come to you. Mind should learn this truth. Accept whatever is given to you by God and accept whatever is taken away from you by God. You cannot go and sue the doctor for that surgery. That's, of course, our American mentality. But anything that happens to you, sue somebody. Even if you don't look at the road, at the pavement and walk, step into a hole and sprain your ankle, you will sue the municipality. Why should they keep a hole there? Now we can, and that, that is adding more to your karma. Things happen to you according to your karma, by your deeds, good or bad. But if you don't want to accept that and hurt somebody for that sake, then you are adding more of your karma. There's no end for that. That's why it's better for us to accept the responsibility on ourselves. I did something, I am facing it. What I sowed, I am reaping. If I haven't gotten anything from my field, that means I have not sown. The other fellow is harvesting. Whom would you blame for that? Life will be more peaceful, more happy if we learn this truth. And that doesn't mean that I say you should not be doing anything. Do what all you can within your capacity. Because you are not going to do anything beyond your capacity. So your conscience would say, well, I tried my best. Without worrying, without getting into an anxiety, you try your best. Because you cannot even try your best if you get into anxiety. An anxious mind, a worried mind cannot do a better job. So keep yourself cool. Do what all you can. And if you feel that, yes, I did all what I can, then God, I did my job. Now it's up to you. If you want to go further, do it. Otherwise, accept it. For everything that comes to our, our life, we should use this policy.
given nations, we come across this problem, not accepting this policy. If somebody is poor, immediately, ah, that guy, my employer, huh, is squeezing me out. Eh? He's taking all, every drop of my blood. Huh? Look at his, huh? he's going in a nice, big, beautiful car. Huh? I'm here without even a bicycle. Throw bomb on his factory. Destroy him. <laughs> he didn't stop you from taking birth in his home. <laughs> you could have chosen his wife's womb. <laughs> then you would have gotten all that money. <laughs> Why did you choose another womb? <laughs> huh? Did he stop you? Hmm? If we could have that control, I'm sure we would all be taking birth in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Why should anybody be want to go into slum area? No. Not in our hands. We haven't sold for that. So, acceptance is a great virtue. It maintains our peace. So, do your yoga. If it comes, accept it. It might work. It might not. There's no guarantee. How many are married people here? How many are spiritually married? Good, thank you. You know, that means married to God, huh? <laughs> 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 good, good. And how many are married the other way? <laughs> I mean, not officially signing a paper, but still married. Good, good, good. Uh, at least, some, don't hesitate to do that. When you are doing it, do it, fine. <laughs> huh? Well, I'm getting it. Oh, you're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. good. Then, it's true, in those days, maybe thousands of years back, huh? was there a, 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 a document for marrying? Not even thousands of years before. Fifty, sixty years back, most of the villages in India, they never had even a marriage uh, office. Of course, they marry in public. There's a ceremony. The priest comes and marries, but there's no document as such. There's no legal paper. The, the village people know that, yes, they got married. That's all. Witnesses are there. So 
So we come across marriages like that. As long as you are living together as husband and wife, fine, but be loyal to each other. I'm not talking about the temporary eh, dating. Eh? Temporary dating is, is not marriage. But if you live permanently with somebody, okay, good. But be loyal to each other. Maybe I'm answering all the questions that are already here or what? Hmm? Is it always recommended to try to worship your marriage partner as God? Ah. What if you have a very weak, non-assertive ego? Could it possibly have a, a detrimental effect on your psyche, which has a, a low self-esteem and sense of inferiority, hmm. particularly if the partner is taking advantage of the situation. It's not a demand that you have to see God in your partner. It's a recommendation. Not to make the other person God. Though the God is present in the other person also. If you recognize the God in the other person, you are becoming a spiritual seeker. You are becoming a yogi. It needs very strict and hard practice to see the divine element in another human being. That you are elevating yourself. It's like, okay, in the spiritual field, you say you worship your spiritual teacher, your guru. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara. You all sing. Guru is Brahma, Guru is Vishnu, Guru is Ishwara, Guru is the Absolute. But when you say Guru, 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 what comes to your mind? A physical person from whom you will be getting some spiritual advice. But then how can you call that Guru as Vishnu, Brahma, Shiva, God? Because you are trying to transcend the physical limitations. And you are seeing the qualities of Guru, qualities of God in a person. And still because he is still embodied in a physical frame, a human frame, you see the quality of the human beings also. He eats like you, sleeps like you, talks like you, walks like you, sometimes goes crazy like you. The human also is there. But you just say, I want to see the other side of it. The same way to see the same God in your partner, in a way that is more difficult practice. At least in the case of a guru, he may at least talk like a little <laughs> guru. At least in your presence, huh, will be huh, acting like a sort of realized person. <laughs> <laughs> but with your husband or wife, it's just the same guy. 
Maybe he may be acting as long as you date, but afterwards you see the real person. You cannot avoid. Because in the case of a guru, he just comes and talks to you and goes away. You don't know what he is doing afterwards. Doesn't even live in the same room, sleep in the same room. But with that guy, you have to do that. And there you see the real person. And then still, if you want to <laughs> see God in him, it's very, very hard. The God is still there. Forget not. So in a way, a partner to see the other partner as God is more difficult practice than even seeing God in a guru. The simplest thing is to see God in a statue. <laughs> it sits there dumb, does nothing. <laughs> Yeah, you go there, you kneel in front of him, think of something. Oh boy, stay late for cinema, I don't know why, when the service is going to be over. Huh? Huh? The God is not going to bang on your head, hey, what are you doing here? You are sitting in front of me, kneeling in front of, thinking of the movie. Huh? Not yet. The guru might do that. So the easiest thing is to worship God in a statue in an image. But difficult to see God in a guru. But more difficult to see God huh, in a partner. And much more difficult to see God in an enemy. Huh? The one who is looking to hurt you, See that? So it's all in level of your capacity. So it's for your benefit, you are trying to do that. See God in the other person. He may be anybody. It's good to try. That's what your self-esteem, your ego will not allow. Hey, what? Who is this guy? Why should I be worshipping him? In a way, uh, I seem to be having better qualities than that fellow. That's what you think normally, is it not? You always feel that between those two, I am better. So he should worship me. As long as we have that attitude, it's impossible. Forget that gurudam business, goddam business. Treat him as a good human being, be sympathetic. Well, my karma brought me to him. He got married. He has his own weaknesses. Now I realize it. Of course, in the beginning, it was all honey, honey, darling, darling, darling. <laughs> yeah. How many millions of times he would have said, honey, I love you, honey, I love you, honey, I love you. But now he begins to... Say, honey, I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> Still he says, honey, I hate you. <laughs> so what do you want to do with that person? Say, sorry. Anyway, I may have to learn something out of this situation. God is giving me an experience. How to manage. There again, accept it. All right, God, you brought me a devil. Maybe you might have a good reason. You want me to learn to live with the devil. True. Why should the 
the, the school in their games period put obstacles on their road and then want you to jump across or crawl under. Huh? Hmm? Haven't you seen obstacle races? Why? It's a race. They, they like to give you a cup. Why can't you just avoid all the obstacles, run around and say, <laughs> give me the cup? Huh? <laughs> no. They are testing your capabilities. Will you be able to go through it and still win the cup? The proof. So God here has put an obstacle. Here is that guy. Live with him. Rise above those things. Still feel sorry for him. Feel compassionate for him. Pray for him. It needs a lot of strength and understanding. That way, the immediate result is you are at peace. And you feel that, yes, you are trying to help another soul. while elevating yourself. If you don't want to do it, what will you say? Hey, either be loyal to me or get out. Finish, that's easy. He goes out. If that's what you want to do, go ahead, do it. That means you are trying to run around the obstacle. But you won't get the cup. You uh, avoid one obstacle, there'll be ten in front of you waiting. Because that guy is not going to give you the cup easily. He'll put ten obstacles. Why? Ah, you avoided one, now for punishment I'm putting ten now. Yeah. You have to, you have to face it. That's why many people say, easy divorce. When they go out, do they make a heaven? That's why I say, I say a known devil is much better than an unknown divine. <laughs> At least you know him as a devil. <laughs> but how do you know who the other one will be? <laughs> Stay put. We can never, never avoid it. If you want to jump, huh? what do you say? From the frying pan, huh? Huh? Fire. fire, into the fire. That's fine. You are going to be yeah. fried anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be afraid of huh? getting fried. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big fryer waiting for you, constantly trying to roast you, bake you, cook you. If you think of elevating yourself, forget about your low esteem, this, that. By avoiding, you are putting yourself in a low level. You are weak. That's why you are trying to avoid the situation. That would put you into a low esteem. I'm trying to escape. I'm going to run away from the problem. You have said that in a married life, neither person should disturb the peace of the other. But what if your partner's peace is based on laziness and irresponsibility? Could it be necessary to give a good pinch to the partner?
seems you have said that in a married life neither partner should disturb the peace of the other so if you are pinching is not going to disturb his peace pinch you say he is disturbing your peace but by giving him a pinch are you not disturbing his peace he is lazy sleepy lethargic seem to be happy that way <laughs> At least he is not disturbing your peace by just sleeping. If you pinch him and wake him, he may disturb you more. Who knows? <laughs> hmm? That's why don't expect anything in return. The law of married life is the opportunity to. offer you to dedicate to give and not to get if you are marrying somebody to get something from that somebody it's no more a marriage it's a business a good married life means how much i can give to the other person like kennedy once said huh? i think it was a quote huh? don't ask the government how much huh? the government can give you or the country can give you instead question you how much i can give to the country we should remember that we are here to give and not to get if it comes accept it don't reject it but don't demand here you are demanding hey i am here to maintain your peace you are here to maintain my peace is a business if you don't maintain my peace i'll disturb your peace that's not married life so at least one partner should realize this and by you are living a kind of life like that you can slowly transform the person change the person just by your example remember the other partner also has a heart yes yeah who even the the scarecrow had a heart <laughs> Huh? Is not so. The tin man or the scarecrow. The lion had a heart. See, the lion had a courage. Huh? Tin man had the heart. If I had a heart. Huh? Huh? So everybody has a heart. You should know how to touch that. If you don't know how to touch that heart, it's your mistake, and not the other person's mistake. So behave in such a way that you can transform his heart. melt his heart let that beautiful feeling come to the surface by your experience by your ex example we tame even the wild animals don't we bengal tiger tiger walks like a little puppy cobras dance with joy can't we do something to a human being we have to have that 
understanding, strength to do. Just don't put the blame on the other person. Be patient, be patient. 